a five-day-old girl is brought in because of a two-day history of jaundice. Her lab values are total blue ribbon is elevated, indirect blue ribbon is also elevated. The patient's jaundice resolved without intervention in two days. This patient's jaundice was most likely the result of which of the following changes in blue ribbon metabolism compared to an adult. Now this newborn presenting with elevated indirect blue ribbon levels with jaundice that self-resolved on its own is going to be a classic presentation for benign neonatal hyperbilinemia. Now in order to answer this question, we have to know the pathophysiology of benign neonatal hyperbilinemia. Now newborns can classically present with jaundice. And one of the reasons why this can occur is because when red blood cells are broken down, unconjugated bilirubin is going to be released into the blood. And remember that in adults, the life of a red blood cell is going to be around four months. But with newborns, the life of a red blood cell is going to be around three months. So we're going to have a higher turnover of red blood cells in newborns. As a result, we can generate more of this bilirubin in newborns. So the bilirubin production in newborns is going to be increased. So we can cross out answer choice D. Now, once unconjugated bilirubin is released into the blood from red blood cells, it can go into the liver where it can be conjugated. And the enzyme that is going to be responsible for conjugating bilirubin is going to be UDP glucuronosyl transferase. Now in newborns, because the liver is still immature, we're going to have lower levels of this enzyme. As a result, bilirubin conjugation is going to be decreased in newborns. So we can also cross out and switch choice C. Now once bilirubin is conjugated, by UDP glucuronosyl transferase, it can then go into the intestines through the common bile duct, and in the intestines, gut bacteria can transform conjugated bilirubin into urobilinogen. Urobilinogen can then be excreted out from the body as urobilin in the urine or as stercobilin in the feces. Now remember that newborns do not have gut bacteria. As a result, the main enzyme that is going to be responsible for metabolizing bilirubin is going to be intestinal beta glucuronosidase. And this enzyme is going to be converting conjugated bilirubin into unconjugated bilirubin. And this unconjugated bilirubin can then go back into the liver to be conjugated again. So as a result, the enterohepatic bilirubin circulation is going to be increased in newborns. So the correct answer is going to be answer choice B. So remember that because newborns do not have gut bacteria, intestinal beta glucuronidase is going to be the main enzyme that is going to be responsible for metabolizing bilirubin and it's going to convert conjugated bilirubin into unconjugated bilirubin. So now that we have unconjugated bilirubin, it can then go back into the liver to be conjugated again. And so this is going to ultimately increase the enterohepatic bilirubin circulation. So we're going to have this circle going on within the intestines and the liver as a result.